Um, I'm just going to be brief, but I, I got really inspired by this presentation. Sometimes I'm so down and deep in uh, sort of the day by day that I actually never get to sit in the audience and listen to some of these presentations. Um, I hope this section gave you an idea of why um, Linux Foundation Europe exists. We're talking about projects that are in Europe, uh, but projects that can develop further in Europe, or even projects that are not in the Linux Foundation yet, uh, where we can help lift the, the European open source community. Um, now, the next section, uh, I think, to me, is the most important uh, sort of takeaway that I'd like you get, uh, to get out of this, this day. Um, Mirko, uh, uh, many of you should know him, is a, is a rock star in, in European open source, uh, but really helps, and his sort of primary uh, role is to bring projects uh, in the Linux Foundation, in the Linux Foundation Europe, uh, whether funded or unfunded projects. So we heard about the why, I hope, um, you were as inspired as I was from the last section, and now we're gonna hear uh, a little bit more about the how. Uh, a lot of people during the coffee break were asking, so, so why would I put a project in, in Linux Foundation Europe? And there you go, Mirko, the floor is yours. Thank you. Well, actually, allow me to introduce Scott first. Um, he leads our foundation team, and he will open this, this slot with um, an overview of how we build up projects at Linux Foundation. As Mirko is getting the slides set up, um, I know many of you, but I'm Scott Nicholas. I work on project formation uh, together with uh, Mike Dolan and Todd Benzies on the formation team, and uh, Mirko and the LF Europe team. Um, we'll walk through the, the thought process on, on why does a project want to join Linux Foundation and Linux Foundation Europe. Um, but think of this as an invitation to start a conversation with us. Um, we want to learn about what you're working on, what is important to your respective organizations, and how we can be helpful in your long-term project planning. If you want to go to the next slide? So just to start out answering the question, why does a project look to uh, be hosted with the Linux Foundation? Um, the LF provides supports and structures to build sustainable ecosystems. And if you can go to the... I'll hit it, thank you. Um, and the way we do that is uh, we provide a variety of supports. So let's talk about neutrality and IP clarity. Um, we will hold uh, project trademarks for the benefit of the community. Uh, we will have clear intellectual property terms that are written down that communities are familiar with. Um, we'll have open governance and we have templates that uh, again, many of you are already familiar with. Um, we will enable growth of projects of uh, facilitating project-to-project -project coordination and communications. Um, we have the ability to launch fundraising projects, and we'll talk about that in a second, uh, to provide resources for the project to grow, and those resources can include things like events. We certainly saw the impressive list, for example, of CNCF events that are ongoing, um, marketing, training, CICD infrastructure, and it goes on. Um, and furthermore, we have over 300 um, uh, staff at the Linux Foundation, Linux Foundation Europe, and we're here to share our experience and um, uh, with you grow. So there's no one form of a project. There's no one re required or right type. Um, some projects will raise funding and have a membership structure. Uh, others don't. Um, some will start out with just a handful of developers. Others will, will join us when they already have large numbers of developers. Um, we support all types of projects in terms of open technology and open development projects. Um, uh, code, but we've been focused on standards for a very, very long time. And when you look at the types of projects we support, they generally fall into three categories. Um, unfunded community projects, so this is the column on the on the left where there's a group that wants to collaborate and they're looking for a neutral home. We will help, um, and we'll talk about requirements for those projects, uh, but we'll help stand up a neutral uh, governance for a project and give it a home so that there's clarity with respect to the intellectual property terms. Um, we will then have a community, funded, uh, a community project that has a funding component. This is where you have 
a community with specific resource needs. It's a technical project. And there's a group that comes together to provide those resources. And then we have our umbrella project. Um, and we have a large number of these, and they continue to grow. This is where you have a single funding effort that supports a strategic vision across an ecosystem by supporting numerous projects. We just heard how CNCF has over 170 projects. Um, we have a large number, and I'm going to go through one example uh, umbrella project which is hosted within Europe in a few slides. So, as I mentioned before, we support all forms of open technical collaboration, open source so software, open hardware, open standards, data, and open governance networks. Um, our hosting requirements are not extensive. So, we of course want uh, uh, in the case of code, we want an open source license to be used. Open is defined by um, OSI or the uh, Free Software Foundation. We want it to be supported by an LF member. We want to allow for neutral ownership of um, project assets such as trademark, domain, GitHub account. We don't want anybody to make a commercial dependency on a project and then wake up one day and there's been an abrupt change in licensing, for example. Uh, we want to enable a technical duocracy through separation of business governance from technical governance. So the way we do that is in the structures that I just outlined, the three basic types of projects, when we stand up a funding effort, we will do that alongside as a separate project where it's, it's open, the, the collaboration is around funding, um, physically separate from the technical development. And so you can participate technically without having to be a funding member of a project. Uh, and then we want projects to allow anyone in the community to participate. I'm drifting to the wrong side of the stage by the time <laughs> I finish the slide. So I uh, want to save time for, for um, uh, Mirko. We want to catch back up a little bit on the calendar. So I'm going to go fast or the schedule. Uh, Open Wallet Foundation was, was launched earlier this year. You had a great presentation from Daniel on Open Wallet Foundation. I want to give you an example of how we structure projects works out in practice by exploring this briefly. So Open Wallet Foundation is a project of Linux Foundation Europe. So if someone asks, what is the legal entity for Open Wallet Foundation? It is Linux Foundation Europe. It is a funding effort. So you join Linux Foundation Europe, you join Open Wallet Foundation if you want to be a funding um, participant in the project. The budget decisions are made by a governing board, which has a structure that's set forth in the funding charter for the project. There are a couple additional groups that help out. There's a government advisory council that's being set up now, and there's a technical advisory council. This is a, cu a communication and collaboration group that helps onboard projects. It approves a project lifecycle policy that explains how projects come in and how they mature within the organization, but it doesn't have oversight authority on the projects. The projects themselves are set up under their own governance structure, and these can be uh, Linux Foundation Europe technical projects, they can be Linux Foundation projects, there's flexibility here. They have their own governance, their own contributors come in, and, but they're all working together, sharing ideas and using the Technical Advisor Council to exchange information. So that's a quick overview on how we support projects. Mirko uh, is going to walk through why Europe. Yeah, thank you very much, Scott. Um, so I understand that I'm between you and lunch. Um, but I still want to highlight a few things um, that make the collaboration in Europe special. Um, when we talk about out of Europe, we say that there's, there are certain opportunities that stem from, well, let's say the unique culture and history of industry and public sector collaboration in Europe. Um, we have a structure of very well-developed industry verticals that are not necessarily software companies. Um, they, they all have the same challenge. They're all going through the digital transformation. And as you've seen in the project presentations before, this happens in places where you don't necessarily expect it. Uh, food and agriculture, energy, mobility in general. Um, large, very successful, world-leading businesses sometimes that are making train cars. Cars, food, power tools. <laughs> uh, and they all become more and more software defined. Um, so one thing that we do expect uh, in our future development in Europe is that we will focus on such um, industry sectors and help them with this digital transformation. 
There's a second aspect that's specific in Europe, and that is that the market is really dominated by small and medium-sized enterprises, um, especially software innovation. Um, we reported on this in, in, in scientific studies as well. Um, and that means that we need to build avenues for um, these small and medium-sized enterprises to participate in, in the projects. Um, at eye level, with large incumbent businesses that may have other challenges, like not being software businesses in the first place. And a third aspect I want to highlight is that we have also a strong tradition of public research and development funding. Uh, we've already heard that Linux Foundation Europe is participating in um, European Union Horizon grants, and um, you've seen in the presentation from Alberto how um, Europe invests into development of specific technologies. And um, there's, there's a clear motivation here for two reasons, actually. One is, of course, that if somebody's willing to fund the development of open source technology, that's great. Um, but second, also, we would like to help shape what, for example, the European Union invests in, um, make, it, make sure it goes in the right direction. Um, my screen is too small. <laughs> Um, the, the challenges that we see when um, a business sector is transitioning to, to become more software-defined um, is not really, they're not really limited to the tech sector. Um, I've already explained how, like, for example, mobility is affected by that. Um, so one thing we would like to do in the future is look at such verticals and support the community building around them. A great example that you've already heard here is LF Energy, um, where European energy companies are already participating, but not all of them yet. Um, and so we can grow this effort systematically with the existing projects, um, and where the projects don't exist, um, where we will work on building them up. And here we really need your input. Um, this is, um, until now, uh, this development is driven by market needs. So, so member companies walk up to us and say, we want to invest into a project. Uh, well, we have an internal project that um, we would like to continue further. Um, and this is exactly what we need from you. So please um, catch us in the, in the next breaks and in the next days, and talk to us, to us about the projects that you're developing internally, where you'd like to collaborate with others, and um, can't do that at the moment yet. Um, as you heard from Scott already, uh, the projects that we stand up, they can be part of one of the bigger, well-known foundations. For example, that's where we had a presentation from the CNCF here. There's a cloud-native project that we're building up in Europe. Uh, it makes no sense to duplicate and sp split that community, essentially. So, of course, we will integrate with the existing foundations. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that LF Europe being registered in Brussels does open the door to participate directly in, in funding programs um, as a participant, for example, in Horizon Consortia. Um, and as I said, we already do that. Um, the the Axtac project. <laughs> the the Axtac project is one of them, uh, one of the projects that received funding this year. Um, there's a specific role that Linux Foundation Europe can play here, and that is all these projects require um, that when as the funding runs out, we establish like a viable place where the technology that has been invested in will be continued uh, to develop. Um, and historically, for those of you who have been in Horizon projects, that's not the strong suit of Horizon. Right? Most of the projects kind of fall off a cliff when the funding runs out and are forgotten, primarily. And um, that's where we can really help. Because think of a process where in the last year, say a three-year funded project, we will start setting this up as an open source project in one of our foundations, start collecting member companies, bring them in, pitch the project to them, and by the time the public funding runs out for this initial research and development phase, we have a small community around this that is willing to carry this further. Um, and I think this will really solve um, a fundamental problem that we currently have with public R&D funding. And it's a real opportunity. So this is something we would like to develop. That's where we begin in 24 to actively monitor funding calls, both at the European Union level and at the member state level, and then help form consortia and systematically work on submitting proposals. Um, and in turn, for you, if you are part of um, ongoing um, or like upcoming uh, 
consortia that <laughs> do um, uh, apply for Horizon funding, then, <laughs> then please um, keep us in mind. We, we are happy to join your consortium as the dissemination partner, uh, either us as Linux Foundation Europe or one of the more specialized projects um, that can then work with you. Um, I think this was my main message because Scott has given you many of the details. There's no joint venture required. That's maybe one thing I want to highlight based on the discussions that we had earlier. Um, open source collaboration is possible without a deep legal agreement between you and your collaborators. You can participate uh, in a coalition of the willing and the, um, the barrier, also the, the internal policy barrier possibly if you are a part of a large company, can be much lower to, to engage in an open source project compared to, for example, a joint venture. I think I'll stop here and um, they reach out to us. Um, either now in the break or here via this email address um, and talk to us about the projects that you would like to set up with us. Thank you very much. <laughs>